Hi, welcome to my tutorial series for the analysis of algorithms. In this video, I will explain how to determine the big O order of the binary search for its worst and average time complexities. Briefly, binary search tries to find an item from a sorted array by repeatedly dividing the array into halves until the solution is found. As you can see here, we have an array of seven items. The algorithm looks into the middle of the array only. In this case, it is 4. Then it can be either 2 or 6, depends on the item you are looking for, and so on. For example, if you are looking for item 3 in this array, then the algorithm will first look into the middle of this array, which is 4. Then it needs to determine whether it needs to go into the left-hand side or right-hand side. In this particular case, it will be going into the left-hand side because 3 is less than 4. Again, it looks into the middle of the array, which is 2 in this case, but the item 3 is more than 2, so it will look into the right side of the array. Once the solution is found, the algorithm stops, otherwise it returns a message that the item has not been found. The first part of this video is to determine the bigger order of the binary search for its worst case time complexity. To solve these kind of problems, first we need to find a pattern for elements versus passes. For example, if we have 15 elements in an array, then we need to determine how many passes are required for each of these elements. So as you know, the binary search looks for the middle of the array, which is 8 in this case. So to reach 8, it requires only one pass. In its second iteration, it will reach to 4. So that means two passes are required to reach 4. Then three passes are required to reach either 2 or 6. And lastly, four passes are required to reach the rest of these elements. So if we just analyze the lower half of this array, we will see we have just one element that requires one pass. So we have just one item, which is 8, that requires one pass. Then we have four that requires two passes. Elements 2 and 6 would require three passes. That's why we have total of two elements. And lastly, four elements require four passes. So to get the passes for the complete array, we only need to multiply it by two, except for the middle item, which is one. So here we can see the relationship between passes and elements. For one pass, we just have one element. For two passes, it is 2 raised to the power 1, 3 passes, 2 square, and so on. So if we want to generalize it, we have i passes for 2 raised to the power i minus 1 elements. After finding the complete pass, we only need to establish the relationship between number of items versus total pass. So here, if we sum up all these numbers, we will get total number of items, which is n. This is our geometric progression, so the summation of these numbers will give us 2 raised to the power i minus 1. To solve this, we can have log base 2 in both sides, and then i is log n plus 1 base 2. So for n elements, the maximum number of passes would be log n plus 1 base 2. Let's try out some more values. In the previous example, we were getting complete passes. What if the array size is 16 or 29? In this particular case, we will have just one more pass to cater for these additional items. So the final worst case time complexity would be seal of log n plus 1 base 2. However, this can be simplified further. So the final answer would be log n base 2. The second part is to determine the bigger order of the binary search for its average case time complexity. Finding the average case can be a bit tricky. The average case means an item can exist anywhere in the array or does not even exist. So in this case, item 5 exists and item 12 does not exist. Let's say the probability for an item to exist in an array is p and 1 minus p for vice versa. So if the item exists and it is equally likely to be searched, then its probability would be p times 1 over n. 
Before starting calculation for average case time complexity, we must understand what is expected value. So expected value is a constant value that is achieved after several evaluations. For example, if you roll a dice for multiple times and calculate its average, you will get 3.5 as its expected value. For smaller number of trials, you may not get this value, but as you increase the number of trials, you get a constant value that is known as expected value. And this expected value is average case time complexity. Mathematically, it is a summation of value times probability of each item. And to simplify this formulation for average case time complexity, we will have summation of pass times probability. The passes or number of evaluations we have already calculated for individual items. So we can replace these variables with the numbers. Please note that we have to find the expected value or average case time complexity of every possibility whether an item exists or does not exist. So here blue expression shows item exists and green expression shows item does not exist. I have simply collected these values and put into here. For example, I have just one element for first pass, then two passes for two elements, three passes for four elements, and so on. If the item does not exist, it will require the maximum number of pass plus one. So here k represents maximum number of passes. This expression can be simplified further to this equation, which is unfortunately not very easy to solve. So we have to find a way to solve this one first. That expression can be written as sk. To solve this, we have to multiply by 2 on both sides. This will give us this expression. If I multiply it by 2, it will give me 2 raised to power 1. This one would become 2 raised to power 2 and so on. Here k is the maximum pass, which is log n plus 1 base 2, which we have derived in part 1 of this video. Now if we subtract these two expressions, we will get a simpler expression which is simply a geometric progression. So this can be easily resolved to this value. And finally, we have a simplified expression, which is this. Let's now revisit expected value, which was this expression. And the highlighted blue has been simplified to this expression. So finally, we have this one plus something on red, which we haven't discussed yet. This is to cater for those items who do not produce complete passes. This has been discussed in the part one of the video. So these items require maximum passes. However, this does not have any major impact on the final solution. So we may easily cross it off. Next, we expand this expression and find the solution. Remember, k is log n plus one base two. So after solving this, we will get something close to p log n base 2. p is just a probability constant which can be removed to get the final big O order. So the big O order of the average case time complexity is log n base 2. Thanks for watching this video. Please like and subscribe to this channel to get similar videos. Thank you very much.